George Orwell is an English author best known for his novels Animal Farm and 1984. But he didn't write these books until the last decade of his life. So who was he before he was Orwell? Well, technically he was Eric Arthur Blair. Orwell was just his pen name. He was born on June 25th, 1903 to a military family stationed in Matari, India. But Orwell grew up in the UK. He was kind of a loner, spending his time reading, writing poems, making up stories, and holding conversations with imaginary friends. So weird, right Sally? <laughs> no, you shut up. Things at school didn't get much better. At eight years old, he went to a boarding school where he was beaten and publicly shamed for wetting the bed. Wow, doesn't early 1900s England sound fun? He went on to eat in college, but instead of going to university, opted for experiences, like joining the Indian Imperial Police in Burma, where he realized, geez, imperialism sucks. Orwell called this time in Burma the wasted years, but not like wasted, but like, you know, wasted. These years inspired Orwell's classic essays, A Hanging and Shooting an Elephant, as well as a second novel, which he'd write 10 years later. After five years there, he went back to Europe to pursue a career as a writer. But he could only find work in a variety of odd jobs, as a tutor, a used bookshop clerk, and even a dishwasher, living practically in poverty. Basically, Orwell was the first hipster. And if you don't believe me, we're talking about a guy who once wrote a top 10 list for the only way to drink your tea which included putting the milk in after the tea was poured, which is still hotly debated. Those experiences opened Orwell's eyes to the lives of the oppressed classes, not only the injustices they suffered, but also the value and beauty in the simplicity of their lives. These years would ultimately become the source material for his first novel, Down and Out in Paris and London, which he published in 1933 at 30 years old. It was at this time that he took on the pseudonym George Orwell, out of fear that his writing would embarrass his family. But weirdly, not because he was once photographed donning this problematic mustache. Well, Eileen O'Shaughnessy certainly didn't have a problem with it since she married Orwell in 1936. Eileen was witty and ironic and a realist, knowing when she married Orwell, his work came first and she came second. Orwell then landed a job as a news commentary producer with the BBC in 1941, but in 1943 he was like, look, I'm an artist, I'm not useful here, I gotta go live my calling. And he did, publishing Animal Farm, an anti-Soviet satire in 1945 which put Orwell on the map as one of the greats. But the success was clouded by the death of his wife, who died six months earlier on the operating table during a hysterectomy, leaving Orwell alone with their young adopted son. Meanwhile, Orwell was sick himself and lonely. He'd contracted tuberculosis and it was getting worse. But he had this idea, this brilliant idea for a book that had to be written. His less brilliant idea was to do it from a remote farmhouse in Scotland. He nearly died there, writing much of the book from the confines of his bed. But he finished it. And 1984 was published on June 8th, 1949, and was an instant success. A few months later, so sick he was confined to a hospital bed, Orwell got remarried to Sonia Brownwell, a friend and colleague, who many think was the model for Julia, the heroine from 1984. Sounds romantic, right? Not so much. First of all, Orwell had proposed to a bunch of women before her. He was a very lonely man. And his proposal to Sonia included telling her she needed to learn to cook dumplings. While their marriage isn't the stuff of fairy tales, it had its own kind of romance of pragmatism. She kept a lonely man company in his darkest days, and he left her the executor of his literary estate. After his death, she developed the George Orwell archive which has allowed Orwell to live on in perhaps the most appropriate fashion, through his writing.